I'm at Unearthed Farm in Kelowna, not too far from I am, and I'm visiting Jordan Marr, who's been a pretty long time friend of mine. We've been farming for around the same time, and uh, he's farmed in various different places. Right now, this is a new farm of his that he's starting up, and it's, I wanted to just kind of show what he's up to right now, because he's farmed on other plots of land before. He's a landless farmer like me, he doesn't own his land. This is a lease. And uh, this is a brand new piece of land he's getting to start. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys what are some of the things that are happening when a new farmer comes in to get a place right from scratch. So this is a just pasture land. He's in here putting in blocks. He's got a nursery and he's just getting started. So he's it's a lot, but some of the really cool things Jordan's got going on here is he's got this sort of modular infrastructure that when the time or if the time comes that he needs to get off this lease, he's got at least five years here, that he can pull it all out and drop it down somewhere else and you know maybe he'll buy a piece of land or something, who knows. But these are the kinds of things that are important for people like us who are farming on leases on uh, land they don't own are really important to uh, see because we need to think about how we can build capital resources and not lose on those capital resources when the time comes to move or leave. So here's Jordan. Jordan, you've been farming for a while. Like we've been farming for almost the same. Yeah, you're, maybe you might be started, farming longer than me actually. Well, in terms of our businesses, you started one or two years ahead. I think one year ahead. But you you had been working at. I did, a, some, I did some apprenticeships. Yeah. Uh, and yep. then a couple years of apprenticing. Yeah. And one year of kind of kind of a co kind of a profit sharing arrangement with, with one of the farms we apprenticed at. Right, right. That and was on the coast, on the that island. That was on the island, Vancouver yeah. Island, and yeah. then a year of moving around looking at farms, and yeah. then we, Vanessa and I ended up in the Okanagan, and yep. and then six years at that at, site in, in Peachland, Peachland and right. then this is the first year on the new site, the new yeah. lease yeah. here in Kelowna. Yeah. yeah. So how did this lease come about? Uh, well, I started, so, okay, um, I knew about a year ahead that I needed to find a new place. Yeah. Vanessa's career so Vanessa started the farm with me but very quickly this is Jordan's new, wife my wife partner. yeah uh, new new career for her developed right when we started the farm which was midwife as a midwife yeah yeah so um, it turned out this is where she was gonna have work and right. when she's on call as a midwife she can't commute like she just got to be closer to her clients um, so we knew we had to move we knew we wanted to move the last yep. farm was great but it was too small yeah um, so that's we knew a year ahead we started looking for I, it was really just I was networking. I printed off some like promo materials and stuff. Frankly, I didn't find tons of good opportunities. Yeah. This was the best opportunity I found, and it's got a like a ton of potential. Yeah. Um, it's nice wide soil. open. Yeah, I've got flat. It's flat. Probably not as rocky as you had last no, time. <laughs> no, I was, I was in a gravel pit last time. Yeah, literally. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, this is fi I've got a five-acre lease. Yeah. Um, Five-year lease. Or five, five acre. Five year, five acre lease. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I don't intend to grow on all that right away, if ever. Yeah. Part of it is, the way I like to farm, I, I've always wanted to have at least a third of my main garden yes. in fallow, so yeah. I can rotate every yep. year or two. Exactly. So I finally can do that. I didn't have the That's space awesome. in Peachland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, so I think, the other thing you're gonna see as we do the tour, Curtis, unlike like the urban farming, your approach is I like space. Oh and yeah. So I've got massive pathways. If I had the space, I'd be all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got. So like even even if I end up growing on say three acres, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like square footage of right. real estate that I'm growing in, it's it'll be a lot less than that right, just because right, right. you'll see the pathways are all like five to ten feet wide yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And then within the gardens, you know, whereas you're what are you down to? Twelve inch pathways? Ten. Ten inch. Yeah. I'm up. I'm gonna be up between. 18, 18 and 24. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. That's easy. Why, yeah, well, I did, I, to me, it just comes down to what, how you're going to manage that extra space. And, and I've, I'm trying to lay it out in a way where I, I have various tools and machinery that, yep. like, for example, the pathways, I've got a skinny little tiller that'll hit that pathway almost perfectly. Perfect. And that's how I'm going to keep that clean. And Perfect. I'm a big dude. I don't, I, I yeah. can't, the t your 10 inch approach is impressive, but I, <laughs> I, I couldn't, I'd it's go It's all out of necessity. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So this is awesome. So you've got blocks, you've got, what, what are these going to be? Let's, let's, can we go in? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, for reasons I won't get into, because it, it almost doesn't matter, I ended up with um, blocks of nine beds at 50 feet. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's what's worked well for me. The 50 foot bed length has worked well. And then yeah. of course, once you start that, it's kind of hard to switch Change. anyway, because yeah. you yeah. get your tarps that length and that sort of yeah. thing. So yeah. what you're looking at, if you kind of uh, pan over here, mm -hmm. like you'll see lots of different blocks um, turned over. And each each one of those that's separated by a strip of, of sod is, is nine going to be nine beds at 50 feet. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be 24 of those or 216 beds uh, in, for my main production garden. Uh, and then um, if you take one half of w what I just described, 108 beds, there's that much in reserve the next there plot over go. that right will be to cover crop for a year or two. Maybe take the odd root crop off in the fall, like a small portion of it, but otherwise in fallow. Uh, so that I have the opportunity to rotate if I want yep. and take take one of the like you know 12 blocks at a time yep. right out of yep. production then beyond that I've got a little more production plan for this year a perennial garden uh, that's where we're gonna a couple caterpillar tunnels are going up as soon as possible mm -hmm. and then at the very back uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of the uh, summer crop production over um, landscape fabric so some nice. cucurbits and nightshades and that sort of thing yeah yeah yep. um, <laughs> that little structure there is something I'm playing with. It's one so so when I harvest Curtis, I really like sending myself out and my staff out with a bicycle and a trailer full of bins. Yes, I it's saw one, that on your Instagram. So it's one reason I've got the wider pathways, and then the idea with a little structure is even though it's going to end up casting a bit of shade on my beds, I'm not that concerned about it. I'm going to cover that in shade cloth as well. Yeah, and then it's going to act as like a pass through. So when they go out. If they're in this part of the garden, they'll go through that pass through, park the trailer in there in the shade, and that's where they'll base their harvest out of, um, so that the, so that the, the crops can sit there a few minutes longer as they're getting another bin or another bin or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have so two or three of those through the garden, and then in each one, I also plan to have a duplicate set of all my hose and other weeding stuff, so that any staff member doesn't ever have to go far Brilliant. to get what they need. Brilliant. So we'll try that out. Um, I almost needed more space for that to really work, but whatever. They're yeah. <laughs> super quick to put up and take and down. And what's your irrigation approach going to be? You're going to have oh, well, buried PVC lines and then have, yeah. have uh, a, impact heads on each block? Or okay, something? so like roughly half my garden of what I just described is going to be devoted to overhead watering, like mm -hmm. crops like densely planted greens and stuff like that. Yeah. The far half will be all crops that can handle just drip. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, impact through here. I've got one two inch header line right there, yep. buried, and that's yep. all I have in right now. I've yep. got a, in the next month, I'll put in all the rest, the yep. offshoots, probably one inch or 1.5 inch PVC, yep. buried. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try and bury as much as I can. I've traditionally always been overground and it's so annoying. So, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that's it, and then right next door, I've got I've got a neighbor here. It's a community farming group, and they're they've okay. got a little incubator farm going. Is that actually happening now? Yeah, it happened. It started last year. They had their first three incubator farmers there, and then the the food the, the garden for the food bank is going in for the first time this year on the plot down from there. Okay. Um, so that's kind of cool. There'll be lots of people around. I yeah. kind of like that. But I, I intentionally, when I came here chose the very back of the property yeah. knowing it was going to be a multi-user property they kind of said which third of the field do you yeah. want and i on the edge yeah for sure <laughs> otherwise you'll have too much traffic yeah to prevent you from working it's great to have that kind of social equity build up with that community but uh you also got to get work done at the end of the day too. yeah totally totally yeah. yeah 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 um right on so you got like things you got parts top tarped off have you tilled these then tarped them or just tarped yeah, them straight away it just totally depends so like uh Right, right to the left of the BCS there, those two plots, I just turned over with a rotary plow. Okay, yeah. So you see, that's my tiller on there, yep, but I yep, just yep. rotary plowed them. Um, and I'm gonna double tarp those. I'm in a real hurry. Like, yeah. you know, I'm trying to have normal production this year. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually put two tarps on each one of those now that they're turned. Um, Partly, partly for the extra heat under there, and partly because um, I don't deer fencing's coming; it's not in yet. And if I have one tarp, the deer are going to poke right through. Right. Uh, anyway, so some of them have had tarps straight on sod, and those were in last fall. Some of them will, uh, you know, th this half of the garden I won't be planting for quite a while, so yeah. I didn't even turn them. I just put the tarps on because right. by the time I pull them up, they'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it just depends. It just depends on how quickly I need the soil. Uh, for actual garden in, in terms of what I'm doing. Right um, Curtis, I can show you a couple other things of interest if you sure, want. Absolutely. So let's... What do you want to do? We'll go over to the trailers and All I mean, right. that's kind of a little different. <laughs> oh, is this your new walk-in cooler? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right so, on, so there was a... There was a, some, uh, some market gardeners who retired last year and they were selling... This was their command center. So the trailer on the left is just a storage trailer, albeit it has... Um, 
you know, it has light sockets and stuff. It's wired for, it will be wired for lights. Yeah, yeah. This guy, and that's a shorter trailer. This guy is, okay. I think, a 51 footer. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, so the back here, let's, well, first I'll describe it. The back half is a, a big walk in cooler. Yeah. The, the near half is a packing room and office, or wow. will be. <laughs> then you can see the brackets along yes. there. There's gonna be an overhanging roof to about here. That's gonna be your post harvest area? All my wash station and uh -huh. stuff. Then I've got a carpenter coming in in the next month. He's gonna build all the decking up to the trailers and then I'll be backing my van in here ramp down, load up and go. Brilliant. So there's a lot of work to totally do. Totally modular. Yeah, I mean, that's, I want to be here long term, but, but this means you might that- you have to move, exactly. then you can take it. Oh. Okay, not a lot to look at right now, but you can see the first half is going to be you, yep. packing room and office. I'll probably end up packing my CSA right along this wall. Uh -huh. I'm going to put some shelving in and have bags lined up. And then at the back, you've got the cooler. Yep. Um, so, did you wall that off yourself? Did you all do that? Did you no, no. I mean, this was all... It all, was done like that. Oh, well, because this was... The, the previous owners, I mean, they were market gardeners. This is what they used for years for oh, their setup. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, okay. So the other cool thing is it came with, like, all the shelving, a whole bunch of bins. Like, they were clearing out everything. Wow. So, um, <laughs> it was it was a bit of a... I'm still at a scale where, like, you know, this making this purchase was a bit scary because I don't have a lot of cash flow. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of decisions lately where it's just like, I had to have a bit of faith. Like it's yeah. educated guessing or educated, I guess, I mean, calculated risk. Yeah. Uh, but but there's, still the, some, there's still some risk. Well, you've been in the game long enough now that you're confident in your ability to deliver. Like if this was a new farm and you'd never farmed before, that's a ton of risk. Yeah, totally, but you totally. But you, you, you trust in your ability to get those plots prepped those crops in the ground, and you're gonna have a pretty good estimated time of delivery. Yeah, totally. I mean, the the, the risk I've taken is that, um, like, I think this is gonna be long term. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this was gonna be an awesome opportunity. But yeah. when I when I signed on to the lease, I had commitments from the landlord of water, decent water out to the field, of power uh, out to, out to the field with them paying a portion and me paying a portion. Yeah. Commitments aren't the actual thing itself. So. Um, you know, I'm still waiting for that, although it's it's happening in the next few weeks, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I signed on a year ago without, I had to, you know, again, it was a calculated risk. I'm, I was confident in my new landlords. Mm -hmm. They're a, a nonprofit organization. Um, and then with this, you know, like uh, I think these trailers were, are gonna be fabulous for what I wanna do, but yeah. it was a, you know, it was a $15,000 expense that I had to decide on yeah. a year ahead of when I was gonna be using them. So yeah, yeah. yeah, and there could still be hiccups, right? I haven't hooked yeah. up the cooler yet and all that stuff, but I think I'm feeling like overall pretty, pretty good, pretty excited. I think in a year's time, this is gonna be a rocky year. I just had my, you know, my, my wife had a baby yeah. like six weeks ago. <laughs> um, this is gonna be a crazy year, a bit scary, a bit stressful. I think in a year, two years time, more than likely it's going to be yeah. just awesome yeah. so yeah. that that's exciting yeah that's awesome these are the the challenges of of life and you come out a better person and uh now that you have a child you'll probably learn to crush it even more yeah you're, you're gonna have to learn to deliver yeah right? yeah i i, I think time when it's time to work you gotta work i i think if yeah i think i think I kind of assume that most people faced with that challenge of like the new family, young family, is probably most of people in that situation end up oh, for sure. realizing that they just have to be more disciplined That's and right. not waste as much time online and exactly. that sort of stuff. So that is Jordan Marr. Check out Jordan's podcast, theruminant.ca. It's a fantastic podcast. He's been producing content for a very long time. And for those of you who are really into the tech the the, uh, the specific stuff with farming, whether it be infrastructure or techniques, Jordan is the guy. He's produced a ton of content. I'll leave his podcast link down below, and I'll also have his website, Unearthed Farm, down below as well. Thanks for watching.